Hello, everybody. Welcome to a very special edition of the Make Code Arcade live stream. I guess it's not the Make Code Arcade live stream today. Today is the Make Code Help Desk. I'm Richard. I'm Richard in the Make Code Forum. Well, this is hard. Who is next? Eric? We go out there. Yeah. Sure, sure. Yeah. Hey, I'm Eric Anderson, and I'm a dev on the Make Code team. Uh, okay, J is before T. Uh, hey, I'm Joey at J Wonderland Make Code Forums, and you've seen me many times. And I'm Thomas, uh, TH Sparks on the Make Code Forums. So I'm also a dev on the Make Code team. Yes, I should say I'm E Anders on the Make Code Forum. There you go. Um, ooh, ooh, one oh, more. and we got one more person. Hey, Ben, you're live right now. So go ahead and introduce yourself. Hello. Uh, ben here, Donuts on the Forum. Ooh, your donuts on the forum? I am donuts on I the thought forum. It was just for the jack. Yet, but no, I thought it was just for, I, thought, I thought it was just for the game we were playing yesterday. Ah, uh, both donuts in a lot of places. All right, well, today we are not making arcade games. Um, I just have this one open so that I could fiddle with it while I'm talking. Um, we are uh, going to be taking your questions and giving uh, the best answers we can. And we will um, take questions about anything. Do you have questions about like, what are new features coming in Make Code? Like, you know, questions about projects that you have that need to be fixed. Anything you got, let us know, and we will do our best to answer them. Um, so uh, to start off, please just post your questions in the chat. Um, but we have some questions in the forum. And while people are coming up with questions, we're going to go ahead and open up that forum thread and take a look. So first question we have is, well, the first one I'm going to answer is um, from Blobby, and it's, will there be another big game jam? And if so, will there be one soon? Yeah, sorry, this one's on me, guys. I need to, I just need to, to get the ball rolling and organize them, because I'm always the one who kicks them off. But um, yes. There will be. There definitely will be. I, I mean, I'm hoping. I guess now winter's almost over, but let's let's say spring. Let's say there will be one in spring, and I'll 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 make sure it happens. So, sorry sorry about the uh, the um, wait on those. Uh, for folks who are new to the team, we do game jams periodically. So you know, we do mini game jams once a month, but we also do these big game jams where we actually choose winners, and there's like a, a whole big to do and all of that stuff. Um, those ones are a little bit more effort, though, so we don't do them quite as often. All right. Next question that we have is, are there any code efficient ways to create an eight directional system like in Super Metroid? All the methods I worked with end up having a huge toll on the editor. OK, so Super Metroid. Just quick show of hands, who on this call has played Super Metroid? Played Metroid, but not okay. Super Metroid. I think Metroid had this too. Actually, it, no, it probably it didn't. Like they must be pretty no. similar. I don't think you could do it with Metroid because you needed the shoulder buttons. Oh. Um, right. So in Super Metroid, um, the way that this eight directional system worked was you could shoot in eight directions. So you could shoot left, right, up, down, and then in the diagonals. And um, the Super Nintendo didn't have, it, it just had a D-pad, right? It didn't have a joystick. So in order to aim, you would use R and L in order to aim upwards and downwards for firing things. So, you know, I don't think we're going to do that exactly because we don't have L or R either. But um, we can we can, we can can make this happen real quick. This is, this is pretty easy to do. And in fact, to do this, I'm going to use um, an extension so um, Joey has a very nice extension that I add to basically every project, which is jwonderl slash arcade sprite utils. No, no. Util. All right, give me a quarter. So are we going to do, say, hold down the B button and up? I think so. Yeah, yeah that's my like plan. That. Mm -hmm. Um. Yeah, for those who don't watch stream regularly, um, every time one of us makes a mistake in typing in a thing, which only applies to me now, because I'm the only one who codes on this stream, um, they get a quarter, and we're eventually going to use all these quarters to buy a puppy. All right. So um, we're going to make a character real quick. And um, you know what? Actually, to do this, I'm just going to add the platformer extension. You don't need it for this example, but it'll 
uh, save me from doing all of our boilerplate code. Um, so like uh, like uh, Eric mentioned, we are going to have to use a button in order to do um, diagonals. And I think the B button is probably the best choice for this. Um, so we're going to make a character right now um, that is going to use the platformer extension because the what the platformer extension does is it saves you from having to do all of the platformer code. Um, so as soon as you create a character, they can already jump and move around and stuff. Um, we need a tile map too. So I'm going to make it just the size of the screen. So 10 by 8. And we will put in some. Oh, wait, that. Oh, yeah, yeah, wait. I'm editing a tile right now. We will put in some stuff for us to jump on like that. Um, OK, so go ahead and set controls enabled on this guy. Where is that? Right here. I still need to organize the blocks in this extension. All right, cool. So we got a basic um, uh, platformer going now. Um, so we're going to be firing when we press the A button. And um, we have to be able to fire in eight different directions, like we mentioned. And um, the reason I added the Sprite Utils extension to this is that it has a really wonderful block, which is um, set velocity at angle. So we're going to be creating a, um, a projectile for this. And you know we'll just do set projectile two, but we're going to set this VX and VY to both be zero. Like that. And we're just going to make this into a little two by two yellow square. All right. Um, so now if we press A, we just leave these little yellow dots behind, like Hansel and Gretel's breadcrumbs. Um, and uh, what we want to do is um, set the angle depending on like which direction we were last facing. So um, the easiest case here is just figuring out if we're facing to the left or right. And there's a few ways to figure that out. Um, because I'm using the platformer extension, I can just go ahead and use this has state block. And so if I'm facing left, then I'm going to know what my angles. And you know, I'm going to make a variable here for the angle so that we don't have to rewrite this a million times. So. Let's do this. So this will be if we're facing left. This will be if we're facing right. And we're going to set the angle for both of them. Then down here, we are going to take our projectile. So change this to be projectile. We're going to set the angle and we're going to set the speed. Um, and we'll set the speed to be just like 200. All right, so right now we're always setting the angle to be zero. And if I fire, we can see, oh, I have um, jump on A. So I'm going to change this to be B. Um, so if I um, fire, we see we're always going to the right. That's because zero degrees in make code is to the right. Um, as it increases, it's going to go clockwise. So if we wanted to do facing left, we want it to be 180 degrees. So we're going to change this to be 180. And this isn't going to work because um, this is we're, we're writing in degrees because that's the easy way to do it. But um, this actually takes in radians. Luckily, Sprite Utils has our back again. Um, there is a convert degrees to radians block. Put that angle in there. And now when we fire and we're facing uh, left. Oh, I did this backwards, didn't I? OK, hey, you swap these around. Behind you. All right, so now now we can fire when we're facing left, fire when we're facing right. Um, we also want to be able to fire if we're um, going up or down. So we're going to expand this if statement some more. Um, you know, actually, I'm going to leave this as is, and I'm just going to put in another if statement right here. So we're going to do if um, the up button is pressed, we're going to fire up. If the down button is pressed, we're going to fire down. And then for the else case, we're just going to do this thing that we're already doing. So if we're firing up, we want to do um, that's going to be 180 plus 90. So that'll be um, 270. And um, if we're firing down, that'll be 90. All right. So we'll try this again. Now I can. Oh, did I do it backwards again? Those feel backwards to me. Yeah, I was gonna say. No. Uh, there, yeah, drag out the else. Drag out set velocity to the. Oh, the oh, oh, side. yeah, that's what it is. Um, yeah, that too. Uh, yeah, there we go. Oh, okay. 
right, so that's working correctly. And if I jump, I can shoot down if you look closely. All right, so we got that. Let's go ahead and do the diagonals now. And the way we're going to do diagonals is like we mentioned, um, we're going to be doing this based off of a special button that we're going to be holding. So um, right now, I want to use both my A and B button for the. All right, auto, get off my lap. Auto, everybody. A and B button. Biting my hand. All right. So um, we are going to go into uh, the platformer extension first, and we're going to set a we're going to change a setting. So right now we have this jump on E button pressed. We're going to turn that off, and we're going to turn on jump on up button pressed, yeah. so that I can use the A button for this. But then we'll, we already we're using up too, right? Yeah, I don't know. It's confusing. We don't have enough uh, buttons to do this well. I did have an idea. I'm not sure if it's a good one. If we made it so you're firing like a Mega Man blaster, so you hold it down to charge it, uh, then we could have it so you stop moving when you're firing, and then you can aim it with that. Again, I'm not sure if that's a reasonable usage here, but. Yeah, well, let's keep writing the code this way. And um, once we have it figured out, um, you know, it, it, it's very easy to change the code, you know. OK. So what we're going to do now is we're going to do um, if is B button pressed, and then we're going to put all of this inside of the else. And now I'm going to take this and put this inside of the B button pressed. And um, we are going to put this facing left, facing right check right here. And now if we are facing left, we are going to do the check um, if up button is pressed. Or let's see, actually, I think we want to do if down button is pressed and then the else, because I think more often you want to fire up than you fire down. Um, and then we're going to do the same thing over here. And now we just need to figure out what all of these angles need to be. So um, if we are facing left and we are firing down, that means let's see, straight down is 90 degrees. So we want to add 45 degrees to that. So that'll be 135. Um, and then if we are firing up, then we want to do 180 plus 45 degrees. So that's going to be 225. Now, if down is pressed and we're facing to the right, that's going to be just 45. And then if we're facing up, it's going to be 360 minus 45, which is 315. Yay, math. All right, so now I can fire like that, fire like that, fire like that. Now, if I hold down B, oh, so hold down B and fire. Oh, right, I need, I forgot. You can't do it with the sim. Oh, I did the exact same thing again. Move, move the velocity part out. Um, right. So now, um, if I am pressing, holding B and pressing A, we're firing up. Um, same thing if I hold up while I'm doing this, and if I hold down, it's kind of hard to. Let me get to somewhere where you can actually see this. Okay. So now I'm facing left and firing down. Um, so there we go. We're firing down diagonally, and if I stop holding down, now I'm firing up. There we go. All right. So yeah, that's the that's the basic idea. The other um, thing that we could do, as Joey mentioned, was so if you are if you want to do it so that like when you're firing, you are stuck in a position you can't move. So like if you're holding down A and then you want to fire, that's really easy. All you have to do really is take the take this exact same code and um, uh, switch out the had state facing left and facing right for is left button pressed, is right button pressed. And um, with that, you'll have you'll have that that behavior basically. Um, cool. All right. So anyway, um, I think that's that's it for that question. Let me go ahead and um, share a link to this. So this will be Metroid. Eight direction demo. Cool. All right. So next question we have. Um, this one's coming from the chat. We have. Um, let's see. Lucas asks, why can't make code projects be bigger than they are, and why does make code get really laggy? Who wants to take this one? Um. Couple of reasons. Um, yeah, I mean, there, there's definitely lots of reasons, and we always love to investigate these ones, uh, depending to varying degrees. Uh, one thing is that, like, 
we should probably specify that this is probably referring to make code blocks projects, right? Because at any time, if you go to like Monaco and you start writing JavaScript, uh, it won't really have any impact about how big the file gets most of the time, unless it's really massive somehow. Uh, so do we want to like anybody have a particular thing besides I just mean, blocks? We have to do render a lot of stuff and we could yeah, do some like, performance improvements. But like Joey mentioned, there are many reasons. But um, one thing to keep in mind is that MakeCode is actually doing a lot of stuff to run your projects. Um, in particular, we have blocks. We take that blocks and we compile that down to TypeScript every single time you make a change. We then take that TypeScript every single time you make a change and we compile that to a different format that we then um, use to convert into JavaScript. We then take that JavaScript and um, put it into our simulator and run it. And it's not running just pure JavaScript. It's running in a runtime that mimics the runtime that is on hardware. And all of this stuff adds up to being a lot more resource insensitive than most websites. Now, is that to say that MakeCode couldn't have better performance? Absolutely not. MakeCode could have better performance. But you know, we're a small team and we try to fix these things as as we can. You know, it's not, it's not an it's not exactly an easy fix for us. Um, but it's always something that we're looking at. We know it's a problem and we want to make it better. I'm always thinking, I wish I could spend more time on the compiler and, and the simulator and just make them more efficient. You know, some ideas like, can we take the compiled JavaScript and turn that into WebAssembly? I don't know ideas to kick around. Mm -hmm. um, then we're adding the, another compile in there, right? So yeah, another compile. So yeah, longer time to restart the sim, but then maybe you'll get better perf on, you know, lots of sprites. I don't know. You know yeah. Yeah. We love to address it whenever we can. Mm -hmm. Yeah. If you have a 300 line, a uh, thousand line auto generated file and you try and load that up, I don't believe any website will load up 300,000 lines properly uh, unless it's very much specific, specific to that. <laughs> I don't know if we have anyway. any. Um, I don't know if we, we have any like uh, storage size limitations in the browser. Uh, local storage, no. not particularly. Okay. Um. So th there is a limit to how much you can store in browser local storage, but it's pretty high. Pretty large. Yeah. Yeah. I I, I've like never hit it. Megabytes of file or something like that, or per entry. I don't think Chrome has a limit. I um. I um. I've probably written more arcade and MakeCode projects than anybody else. Um, and I once downloaded all of these projects onto my local disk. I had over a thousand, and I didn't hit the browser limit. So I, I, I don't, I don't think people hit it very often. They do. Also, also MakeCode projects aren't very big, and they compress really well. So, anyway. Um. All right. Any, anyone else have anything to add for that one? All right, next question is from Kiwi Phoenix, and it is, will there ever be a new MakeCode branch like Minecraft Arcade Microbit, but for developing either HTML5 games or computer games in general? That'd be neat, but it would also make Arcade somewhat obsolete except for hardware, so IDK if you wanted, would, would want to do that. Good question. Well, I'll take the last uh, the last parenthetical there, which is that it would make Arcade Absolute? I don't. I don't think so. Like, even if we make like a fully fledged game editor, like a part of Arcade is just that the limitations make it really easy to get started coding, and you can make interesting games really quickly, right? Like, uh, like compressing that down is hard, and when you start getting into like you know all the color palettes, it gets harder to match stuff up nicely. In my opinion, that's not to say that it would be bad. It's just uh, this yeah. is like you can put three blocks and you have a game pretty much. That's true. When when we were initially pitching arcade, we weren't actually talking about hardware at all. Um, we were just talking about having something that lets you build retro games. And the reason why was because constraints sometimes breed creativity. I mean, so I, I don't think it's shocking to say that Pico 8 was a bit of an inspiration for arcade. And um, if you look over there, you can see all of the creativity that people put into those games. And it has restrictions very much like we do, you know, 16 colors, only so many um, sprites can be on the screen at any one time and all of all of that. And we thought it was interesting and also kind of um, it's, it's it's an easier space to think about than something where you're like writing an HD game. And, you know, if you want to iterate over all of the pixels on the screen, it's impossible and all, all of the stuff like that. So that, that was the idea. Um, but uh, I'm not saying that, you know, it will will never do anything for higher things. Like we've talked about it before. Yeah. 
kind of just brainstorming aloud if if you know if we or anybody somebody wanted to go that route you're going to start being compared to professional game engines pretty quickly um so you know why can't you do this unity does this can i have custom shaders you know it's all the high-end stuff so it might make sense to build your sort of like blocks coding layer or whatever that looks like within one of those engines as a as an add-on or a plug-in and kind of use that as the platform and that way you kind of paves the way to publishing that game up to a to a marketplace because they have all that infrastructure so kind of another way of thinking how to deliver it yeah i absolutely agree with that i think if we did ever go for a higher fidelity thing we wouldn't want to use our own game engine we would want to use like yeah. something that's more supported and off the shelf plugging into unity or something like that would be great yeah yeah um, but it would also when we start talking about more complicated game engine, we are like, if we're talking about 3D models, though, if we're slow in arcade, we're probably going to be pretty slow in anything else in the browser, right? So if we're trying to do anything with a simulator, it's going to be hard, a little bit hard. It depends. It really depends. It does depend. Yeah. Um, Keith Phoenix says Unity plus Make Code crossover. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe we'll, we'll do some experiments around that kind of stuff someday, but you know, we don't have any plans right now. Um, cool. Next up. Oh, one other thing I wanted to mention. Um, uh, Kodu, Eric has ex experience doing a game engine for um, higher higher fidelity things. Kodu and Project Spark, right? Yeah, here, I'll drop a link in the chat. It's a project I work on, worked on when I first joined Microsoft, what, 15 years ago? Um, and yeah, it's kind of a special little fun game development environment for kids visual coding of a different sort so yeah i'll drop a link over in the in the twitch chat cool all right next question is from forum regular and stream regular unsigned arduino i know they're in the chat and um they said i feel like i've asked this before but tile maps with layers you can selectively hide and show layers and then overlap events when you overlap a tile on a certain layer so yeah i think it's definitely possible what do you see any issues with that joey um so just to make sure i'm i'm, I'm understanding this one correctly how uh, different is this one from just like having a point where you teleport to a separate tap on map it's just that they remain loaded at the same time and just a good on, point. On other, like, um, is yeah, I guess I, I I am curious. Like, what is the intended goal here? Is the is the goal to have like you have one tile map that's how everything looks, and then the other tile map is you put all of your special tiles that have like you know, this is the area where the event cutscene starts, or you know, these are where I'm putting all of the special locations so that you can move there. Because that was actually our initial plan for tile maps. Yeah, we were like that's part of the reason why it's just like a red overlay on the map on the walls right is because we were thinking about it in terms of like we already have that coded as a layer with your setting one we have 14 other values we could use in addition to zero and there's a porcupine menu which i love the idea of still to some degree yeah but um i think less interesting is the idea of just having two visible tile map layers that you put on top of each other. Unless I guess some of your tiles have transparency, um, I guess you could do some maybe fun stuff with that, but it's gonna be static at the end of the day, right? Um, unless you're animating it, you know, somehow like Mega Man 3. Yeah, we were just talking about that right before the stream is that we, we, we'll just add that to tile map util. Yeah. The cover over thing. So I am gonna, yeah, we, we are gonna add animating tiles. Um, so look forward to that. Lucas says in all caps, Mega Man. Yeah, so specifically, we were looking at Mega Man 3, and um, here, I'll I'll show it real quick. Um, the, the way they do waterfalls is, is very pretty and very simple. Yeah, so um, these waterfalls in all of the Mega Man games and the water that they have elsewhere. Um, it, so in the NES, you only had so much space for you to store your game and music and art, right? Um, and so they had to be really clever about how they did animations and stuff. So the way they did animations for um, uh, these waterfalls was they coated the waterfall with three colors, okay? 
And the way that sprites worked on the NES was you assigned a palette to a sprite. So you said, like, use these three blue colors with this sprite. And they wanted to be able to animate it, but they didn't want to include different sprites for every single tile that they were going to have if that was part of the animation. So what they did was they just swapped the colors. So the dark blue moves down one, then the, the other blue moves up to the top, and the other blue moves up to the top, and they just keep repeating this. And it looks like it's animating. It's really convincing, actually. Like, I had no idea that this was the trick that they're doing. But the image actually isn't changing. They're just changing the color palette every every frame. It's really cool. And um, this actually isn't the best example. Mega Man 3, I think, is the best example. They have a really, really good, because they also have, like, sloshing water that they do with the same trick. And I had no idea how they would possibly make that happen. But it's it's really cool. Um, and, you know, it doesn't require any processing power. It doesn't require any extra ROM space. They're just swapping the palettes every frame. Yeah. Talking about restrictions thing. breeding creativity, that is kind of perfect. That's a perfect yeah. example right there. Yeah. Uh, one I more thing. Like the idea. Oh, sorry, go ahead, Joey. Oh, one more thing Kiwi Phoenix added on was uh, to make it so backgrounds scroll faster. So like our parallax in the background extension. I could definitely see that is if we implemented it as not like actual multiple layers, but just adding it to the background scrolling extension that I forget what it's called, so that you could rim, like rotate through a background with parallax. Just because uh, you know it's more efficient than having backgrounds that are full screen images, because those just won't work on hardware to some degree. I got you. So you're, you you want to do parallax, but with tile maps, basically. Yeah, that would be what they're saying. That feels pretty reasonable and pretty simple. It's interesting. Um, I feel like it's a little bit different because um, the problem is uh, that you're going to run into issues where it, the loop point happens. Because either you're going to have to make the one way larger to the other one, or you're going to always have to make that middle tile be perfectly looping. You know? Always going to have to make that middle tile fair. Yeah. So, yeah. Well, anyway. Um, OK, next up, um, we have a question. Another one from Unsigned Arduino which is, I see that the music sound effect API is out. Party popping emoji, party popping emoji, party popping emoji. Is there a limit to the number of playing sound effects? Also, would it be possible to individually start sound effects that continue repeating and stop when I call a method? You may know where I'm going here. I don't know where you're going there, but- I feel like you should open up a new tab and show yeah. all the new music stuff. That's what I'm gonna do right now. Beautiful. Way too, way too perfectly um ask a question with uh the feature that i did earlier this week um so i'm opening up beta i'm just doing this in incognito so i don't mess up any of my projects but um uh, and they actually can't see what i'm doing anymore because i'm doing this in a different different tab um but uh, uh in the new uh music category you might notice that a lot of the play sound blocks have changed um they are all the same now and so um we have melody song we have sound effect and we have play tone and um one of the we want to we decided to unite all of this stuff but we also decided that um because we are using the same block for all of them you can now do all these different options so you can have until done in background and looping in background so you can select any of these guys um, and uh, you can stop it at any time if you do looping in background by calling stop all sounds. So that is one way to do that. Um, as you mentioned, though, we also now have the music editor, which I've shown off on stream before, but I guess not recently, um, which is neat. So, you know, you can now make songs and stuff. And um, don't, don't use this until it comes out, probably tomorrow, um, because I am making some changes right now. <laughs> But um, we do now have the ability to have multi-track songs. And like I said, this should hopefully be coming out this week. You know, and, unless it's there's any. Worst that, case, that, but yeah. within, within weeks, for sure. Yep. Uh, um, and the nice things about this is, yeah, so you can, you know, program your songs with this. You can use multiple tracks. All of these different sprites are different sounds. And the explosion track is the drum track. And this is specifically what's changing. I made a bunch of new drum sounds. These drum sounds are pretty bad. Um, One question. And, Under game, do we have the new block from Eric from yesterday too? Good the, question. Um, I don't think do, it's do out in beta yet if you're on if you're on beta. We have this, but not the newest, not the not the newest version. Gotcha. Yeah. 
Um, there, we'll have the sounds in here too, so you can play any type of sound as a sound. Uh, yeah. So you can play a song when you lose, which is beautiful, right? So tomorrow's stream, we are going to, um, I was planning on doing this anyway, we're going to just do a big feature dive on all of the new stuff that's coming to um, Arcade. And we are also going to be chatting about the mini game jam theme because QB Phoenix requested that we did. So um, tune in for that if you want to see more of this stuff. Um, but for now, anyway, I hope that answers your question on San Arduino. There is a ton of new stuff for the music thing. Um, and also, I know on San Arduino, you have a tool for converting MIDI files into songs. I will be documenting all of the stuff that goes into the song. Oh, yeah, there's an error right now. This, don't worry, this will, this will be fixed. Stop looking at it. I fixed that um, one. <laughs> uh that was my uh, contribution to the song api yeah <laughs> um i i will be publishing the format for songs if you do want to take like a midi file or something and, and move it into um all the things lucas says space jam 2 we just did space jam lucas we just did it um yeah plus that's a movie all right um okay cool so next question we have and this um, one is oh yeah what's up i mean it's just important to note that the next question ignoring all the yays yays and yay 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 yays in response to releasing possibly tomorrow yeah uh let's see uh colin colandline says uh show us play song in javascript so in javascript it actually um uh it we so the way we do things in javascript it, it's it's not working today because of that bug that i i just showed you but um, so the way we do field editors in JavaScript is they show up here on the sidebar and then you can click on them and you can make your changes, click done, and then it updates the JavaScript. So you can see my image is now in there. It is exactly the same with music editor. So um, with the music, it just looks like music.play. And then, um, you know, the song is there and you click the sidebar to actually edit the song. Um, that being said, what the, what the thing actually looks like is a bunch of gobbledygook. It's just a bunch of uh, bytes. Um, so that um other thing though uh the songs show up in the assets tab so um you can also edit all of your assets over here and just like with images and tiles you can do assets dot song backtick backtick the name mm -hmm. uh one more thing that's probably worth mentioning uh we if you noticed on the song editor we didn't have a uh, gallery that's not because it's not implementable it's just because we didn't have any good songs so Probably next week or you know after the release, we'll be asking for good songs that to put in. We will, yes. Through some of them in the gallery. Everyone is going to have a chance to get their songs put into the gallery. We are going to ask for uh, people to submit songs on the forum, and um, uh, you know if we get some really good ones, uh, we're going to be trying to fill out this forum. So um, that will. Folks are saying music jam in the chat. Yeah. Yep. Uh, Probably worth a note, really good and legally usable. So just not like you know, songs that are copy uh, written or like somebody else wrote at all, right? Just something you wrote on your own. Don't do happy ask. birthday. Um, OK. Uh, all right. Um, next up. So this question is from Abstract Designer on the forum, and it is, how do you create slabs, ceilings, or floors in raycasting? So I feel like this has two possible interpretations of this. So one, there is an awesome extension called um, uh, the raycasting extension, which is made by a uh, forum user Aki Aki. It's right here. And um, if you drop this into a game, it turns your tile map into this like little 3D raycasting um, in the same style of um, uh, Doom. Actually, let me let me go back to my other tab so these guys can see what I'm doing. Um, so we're going to go into oh extensions. Um, go ahead and add recasting. Do 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 do. And we will go ahead and turn that. Oh, it, it's on by default. Right, mm -hmm. so I um, am now inside of this raycasting extension, and I have a very uninteresting tile map. So it just kind of looks like I have um, a white wall here and nothing else. But I could um, go into here and make it a little bit more interesting. We'll put in some tiles like this and make them make some walls, and then hopefully I'll be able to see this in the in the world. 
go. Unless you're outside of the walls. Oh, yeah, I am. Oh, yeah. No, there it is. There it is. Okay, there. So you, you can see the tiles I just put in. Now they're rendered as a wall, and I can see, like, the corner and walk around in this little faux 3D environment. So I think only faux... render... Sorry, does it yeah. only render where you've specified walls? I think so, yes. Okay. This is cool. Um, yeah, so um, I say faux 3D because, well, this is 3D, but um, this is based off of Doom and Quake in the way that they did um, 3D. Actually, I think Quake was a little bit different, but the way Doom did it. Um, and there is no up or down. So um, you cannot jump. You cannot go move up or down in these in, in these um, uh, rendering, except for a very limited degree. And the reason why um, there is that is to make it so that it um, is faster to process. So actually do this on hardware, actually do this on um, you know, every frame. Um, uh, the, the other part about it is that it is like, if you notice, we can we made this just by dragging in one block, right? It's because it is a 2D game at its core still, just rendered as 3D, right? It's a it's a rendering layer instead of an actual gameplay, uh, like Z. It, well, we have a Z index, but you know what I mean. Yeah. Um, and uh, so anyway, um, I believe that with this extension, there is no way to do slabs, ceilings, or floors. So you can make things appear by making them walls. You know, like I could make a box in the middle of this place like this and make it a wall and press it done. And now when I go into my game, once it reloads, you can see there is now this, this box over there, right? That I can um, look at. So that's that's pretty neat. But um, having something on the, the top or having something on the bottom, it's not supported right now. So let's talk about how you would do that if you were going to. So um, there's a few different ways. I feel like, Eric, you're actually probably more qualified to talk about this than I am. Uh, well, you know, I was just kind of brainstorming myself. How would I do this in, in arcade? There's lots of ways that, you know, Unity and such would do this. <laughs> um, gosh, so um, you might be able to specify another tile map as the floor, and then its textures would be on the floor, and then you could have a ceiling tile map. Yeah. And it would just have to pull from each of those in different Just rendering see. phases this is the Just part where i see. talk about mode seven yeah that was Not basically quick. what i was thinking too and it does go along with our parallax in that like maybe we should start using tile maps that aren't the tile map in the screen sorry thomas i cut you off what were you saying no you're good i was just going to say layered tile maps takes on a whole new meaning all of a sudden true yeah. yes um so uh talking about mode seven so what is mode seven so the super nintendo the second big console that was released by Nintendo had um, a few different graphical modes that it could display things. And the most famous one was this thing called Mode 7. And what it basically did was it could take either an image or a tile map and display it uh, on what looked like a horizontal plane. So this was used a lot to make fake 3D games. So um, for example, uh, Super Mario Kart, I think is a famous uh, example. Um, and if you look at that, you can see that um, here we go. This is what that looked like. You have, um, it looks like you're in a 3D environment, right? But actually what you have here is you have a bunch of 2D sprites and then just a tile map that is being placed in this mode seven on the ground. Um, but because it's got that angle to it and it moves kind of realistically as you turn around and change the camera, it ends up making it really, um, you know, close to, to a 3D thing. So this is not a 3D game. This is a 2D game that is pretending to be 3D using this mode seven graphics format. Um, and so, um, yeah, I, I think that I'm, I'm not going to explain how to implement the mode seven thing, but it's actually fairly simple. There are many, many tutorials explaining how to do this effect. And I believe our very own Kiwi Phoenix, who is in this chat, has walk, worked on um, implementing this in um, Arcade. And um, there are some examples of that on the forum. But um, uh, and this is also how you would do ceiling like the exact same way, you know? So um, yeah, being able to specify a tile map like this or like that. Um, so Kiwi Phoenix, yep, just gave a link to their um, uh, mode seven type game in blocks. Um, that's cool. I think uh, forum user KWX has also done some stuff around this. So um, this mode seven type rendering, it's really cool. 
Um, I love talking about old video game consoles and all of the tricks they do. One of these days, I'm going to talk to you guys about the NES synthesizer and music stack, and it's just going to go on for hours and hours. I will be um, there for that. Yeah. OK. So let's see. Do we have any other questions? OK, from Kiwi Phoenix, we have, for the music API, will you be able to put custom sound effects in, um, like the ones you make in the sound effect editor? So I don't know if that is about um, being able to do that for like drum type sounds. So the ability to have like a sound effect play at a certain point in time or having it be like an instrument where it pitches up and down with the sound effects. Um, in either case, the answer is the same. It's not supported today, but it's something I've actually opened an issue for it in arcade that you can go look at if you want. Um, I, I want to do it in the future. I'm planning to do it in the future. I wrote it in such a way that this could be done in the future. I just didn't have time to do it for this release. Yeah. So it'd be really cool to write it such that we could do it for uh, as an extension, so we could specify in an extension some way to do it, right? And sure. we'd load that special file up. Yeah. Um. Uh. That's that's the idea. Um. Anyway. So. Look forward to it in the future. The way that instruments are actually specified is is really simple, and um, you can uh, uh, I can actually um, I'll drop a link next time. I don't have it on this computer, but I have a, a little instrument designer game which I use to make all of the instruments that um, uh, play in the the engine. So cool. Okay, on uh, Lucas says music stream time. Yeah, maybe I need to figure out my audio setup so that I can actually do it without a bunch of lag like last time I tried to do this. Um, and on San Andrina says Richard when podcast about hardware and software for old video game consoles. Um, yeah, you know, any day soon. Um, uh, I, I really like them and I own a lot of them. Um, all right, cool. So let's see, uh, do we have any other questions here? Please bring them out in the chat if you have anything left, because I think we've reached the end of our forum questions. All of these so far have been arcade um, specific. If anyone has any other questions about anything make code related, these are the folks to ask. Serum in arcade, do we know what that means from Lucas? I believe Serum is a music, I think it's a DAW. Oh, it's a VST. Yeah, it's a it's a it's um a, a synthesizer plugin type thing that you can use with with music software. I remember this. There was this. Um, it was kind of an online toy that, that was almost like a speech synthesizer, and you could <laughs> change the. Well, anyway, my question actually is this: um, How close are we to speech synthesis? Synthesis text to speech. Yeah. In, how hard in would our... it be to do Animal Crossing? Um, not that hard, I don't think, actually. Um, there is a question of getting it to work on C++, but um, yeah, I, I, I don't think it would be that bad um, because there's just so many open source implementations of the speak and spell type speech synthesis, which doesn't sound very good. Actually, it sounds, to my ear, very good. I love that sound, but um, uh we, we could probably make something happen. That being said, speech synthesis is complicated. And part of the reason it's complicated is because of um, how specific it is to language. So if we did do text to speech support, I don't know if we could ever get to the point where we supported anything beyond English. Um, just because supporting accents, all of the different you know types of language emphasis, all of that thing that happens in, in all of the different languages would just not fit on a little arcade board. That would take up all of the ROM space. Um, so yeah, but having something that can do um, just basic syllables, it's interesting because another way that you kind of do speech synthesis is what's called like the Vocaloid um, model. And so Vocaloid is actually, I think it's a trademark of Yamaha. Um, they're these little music things. And what they do is you actually compose speech by using syllables. And that one's a little bit more flexible, but it's less, um, it's not as user friendly, right? Because you can combine vowels and consonants to make um, uh, things that end up being words, but you can't just type text. That being said, it does kind of have the potential to support all these different other types of language consonants, because as long as you break it down to the base, um, uh, yeah, um, you can do it right. Um, here's another thing I can talk about a lot is speech synthesis. I would love to, to talk about that for a while. I could talk about formant filters and all sorts of stuff. Um, 
but uh, there's there's a lot of uh, interesting uh, tech that goes into that. Um, and I've messed around with it a lot on my own, but I, I haven't tried putting it into Arcade. Um, Okay, I've got we just got another question from Coland Line. Um, realizing that the 160 by 120 model is used for external peripherals that play main code games, are there considerations for having different screen sizes with the understanding that the code wouldn't work on a Meowbit, for example? Yeah, you can actually do this today. Joey, do you have the sample code for me? I do not, um, but I will find it. Um, so. Uh, all, this this comes with all the, the caveats you can expect. It's not going to work on hardware. Um, you might run into some bugs with some of the built-in blocks because, well, I don't think we did this in too many places. We might have accidentally hard-coded 160 by 120 in a few places in our code base. So please forgive us for that. Um, I think mostly we use screen.width and screen.height. But um, there is a secret way in JavaScript to make it so that you can change the screen size. I just need the code snippet, which Joey is helpfully getting for me. Trying now. to find it, yeah. Um, I think it's like if there's another question, we can come back, because it's going to take me just a second to find where to find microcode. Um, or you can just show microcode for a second. Um, I'm sorry, Arduino says, it sounds like an intern put in 160 somewhere. No, that would have been me or Joey. No, yeah. I mean, we we typed <laughs> in a 160 a lot of times, and then we changed it out. And it's possible it's still there. No, nope, can't blame interns for this one. Actually, there are a few things that were implemented by interns in our code base that are actually really awesome. Oh, um, for example, the uh, sprite paths animations, that was done by some, some intern high schoolers, actually. They did an amazing job. Worked super well. Um, and also, the sprite say was also done by a high school intern who was working on our project. Um, it's, it's sorry, it's still going to take me a second, but if you, uh, you should look at microcode either way and then you can, <laughs> okay. Um, uh, cause that's like, the, that's the example that's using it. That's why it was implemented as a quick hack. Yeah. Um, so, uh, Microsoft microcode is a cool project that was done by some of the founders of the Mako team and also Eric. Um, and it's this cool little um, editor written inside the MakeCode engine. Go out here. Um, and you can actually click around and you know edit stuff. And uh, for part of this, you might notice this is more than 160 by 120 pixels. That's why this feature was added. It also has mouse support, you can notice. And one of these days, guys, I'm going to make a mouse extension. I just haven't done it yet. I'm sorry. It's going to happen, though. <laughs> um so that we can actually have blocks to to do stuff with mice um again only in the simulator obviously this won't work on hardware no microcode does work on hardware to be clear very um, seamlessly through the jack deck system which it can seamlessly um deploy updates as you code it can deploy it to your micro bit which is where it's meant to run with an arcade shield which is a piece of hardware with an arcade screen plugs the micro bit in yeah that was a yeah it looks really cool. Um, it's 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 very uh, good. Um, here we go. Config.ts. There we go. Found it faster than Joey. There you go. Yeah, I was I was looking <laughs> at the actual PRs, but that's the right way to do it. Um, all right. So secret way to change the screen size. Get out of that. Um, you put this namespace user config. You do export const arcade screen width, export const arcade screen height, and you now have a big screen. Um, so let me go ahead and uh, I'm going to take this and put it into a custom TS file. So do that right here, that, that in there, go back to blocks. And now I will create a sprite just to prove that this is happening. And we will make this the donut, the big donut. Now I'm sad. And I found a PR like. One second Love after it. you said that you found it, I found the PR in Arcade, um, but beautiful. So can uh, you do like 1024 by 768? Like how far does this go? I don't think that would work particularly well, but let's give it a shot. I mean, you can, but you sh should you. I mean, it's the same as like the, the one pixel tile maps that I've seen hanging out in the forums. Like technically it's possible if you put in the right value, you can have tile maps that are one pixel. Should you do that? No, 
Twelve. Look how tiny that donut is. Um. And let me actually, you know, make it move. I mean, if you type in ten thousand by ten thousand, it'll do something. Yeah. So anyway, there we go. We got a tiny little donut moving around the screen. Um. Oh my gosh, we have a lot of things coming in the chat. You know, I've showed this off before, guys. Yeah. We um. Are. We have, uh, let's see, Luca says, give me the code now in all caps. Not with that attitude. Um, yeah, I I'll link this in the chat. Just give me a sec. Um, Antonio Arduino says, warning, make code arcades. Don't want you to see this. Increase the screen size with a simple hack today. Yep. Uh, one more note is that this just won't work in, uh, in multiplayer, too, if that matters. True, yes. This won't work for multiplayer, and this won't Ooh. work on hardware. Interesting. Yeah, multiplayer has some assumptions there that are going to break. I don't know if I want to make it work just because, it, you know, you're going to start sending 50 kilobytes a uh, frame. Uh, yeah. I think keeping it to 160 by 120 for multiplayer is good, but. Yeah. Well, so anyway, oh, and you can also do super weird stuff with this. So let me go ahead and go back over to custom.ts. And I'm going to do 1024 by 30. <laughs> oh, there you go. Look at my and screen. Kiwi Phoenix uh, 364 is asking, can you show FPS? Sure. Um, well, you know, kind of hard Maybe. to tell what I'm selecting in the um, menu right now, but it does it does work actually. Let's see, show stats. Turn that on. There you go. Wow. Uh, so you know, it's running at high FPS, but we don't have any sprites or anything going on right now. So yeah. Yeah. Um, um, does I expect we had a tile you show back. This real quick? Does this? What? I guess it's nothing special about this, so it should just work. No, it, it should work just fine. Yeah. <laughs> okay, the, the thumbnail doesn't work. <laughs> um, but it should be it should be fine. Yeah, there we go. So there we go. We got a game with a donut in um, a very flat void. Um, so there you go. Uh, can someone uh, drop those two links in the chat? Um, the ones that I I, I yes pasted. I will. All right. So it, again, once you get that thing to actually go in and change the, the size, you want to go into um, JavaScript and then go to custom.ts. That's where it's actually being specified. And you can just change these two numbers. And that will change the size of the thing. And just expect bugs. You know, there it, you're going to run into extensions and also, uh, again, code in the I actually haven't yet, but I'm sure it's there. Um, so keep that in mind. All right, um, I think that's it for us today. Um, so thank you so much for joining the Make Code Help Desk. We're going to be having more of these question and answer streams in the future. I want to do this on a somewhat regular basis. I just haven't nailed down exactly the the, the schedule I want to do yet. So probably going to do this on Thursday. So it's not going to take away from the the other um, streams. Lots of my extensions are hard coded. I mean, it's pretty reasonable. Yeah, UV feeds. I, I always I feel like I remember it 75% of the time to not hard code it. Um, so uh, uh, things to keep in mind. Um, we are going to be having another mini game jam. It is going to be the week after next. We do that on the first Monday of the month. Oh, uh, let's see. Yuha Yate uh, sent in a link for a um, project they're having a problem with. We're out of time today, but I will take a look at it and try to give you an answer on the forum. So check out the thread um, for this. Um, and also, hi, Hassan. Um, I think you owe a quarter. That's definitely um, a quarter. Yep. So um, uh, we uh, are going to have a mini game jam the week after next. We do it on the first Monday of every month. We're going to be having a stream tomorrow where we're going to go over all the new arcade features, and we're also going to be talking about um, uh, themes for that mini game jam. So if you want to you know, influence us, please come to that. Um, also, let's see, was there anything else I wanted to talk about? How hard it's going to be to get alphabetical order down. <laughs> True. Um, we are going to uh, have um, a release for Arcade coming out really soon. Um, keep an eye at the Make Code blog where we'll be announcing it, and it will also have a list of all of the features that are going to be added. Um, uh, the plan is, um, well, I'll say the plan is to do it tomorrow, but um, we, if we run into any bugs or anything, we're going to hold off until it's ready. So um, keep that in mind. It might not come out tomorrow, but that's the plan. Yeah. But lots of features in this one, right? We already showed off the oh, color lots of stuff in this there's, one. Uh, yeah. improvements in multiplayer. Uh, there's just lots of stuff. 
yeah, we're going to be demoing for a while tomorrow. There's a lot of cool stuff. Um, all right, and with that, um, thanks for watching. I am Richard at Richard on the Mayfield Forum. I think it's Eric. Oh, we're doing that again? Ben? Yeah, we do it at the it's end. Ben. Ben. Oh, okay. Yes. Uh, I'm Eric E. Anders on the Make Code Forum. Go to Joe. Oh, uh, uh, oh, go to Ben. Ben at Donuts on the Make Code Forum. Hassan at Hassan on the Make Code Forum. Joey at J1 Real on the Make Code Forum. And I'm Thomas at TH Sparks on the Make Code Forum. And we will see you guys tomorrow. <laughs>